uh, we had to light the candles at 8.30, and I, I went and I lit the rice candle, and I was walking down, and someone said it went out. So I went all the way back, <laughs> and I lit it again, and it went out. And I was like, what in the world? <laughs> well, Mike lights it, and it stays lit. And I'm like, holy cow. What am I doing wrong? I, I was blowing it out. <laughs> <laughs> Hey everyone, and welcome to The Pew. This is a new clergy podcast that will be part of our Asbury Beham podcast and also on YouTube. It's just a time for us clergy to come together and and share stories, uh, talk about some serious stuff, talk about some silly stuff, talk about all kinds of things. So we're joined with our team, our uh, leader, our senior pastor, Mike Holly, and our uh, pastor of congregational care, Maggie Dunaway, and our discipleship pastor, Michael Bowman, and me, the associate to the senior pastor, <laughs> uh, Robert Mercer. Little office comment there. I thought it was funny. But anyway, welcome. We thought this first one would be a, a fun time to kind of reminisce. It's almost been a year since we have been together and uh, thought we would just talk about that and reminisce a little bit about this past year. So, Mike, why don't we uh, kind of start with you. About this time last year, you knew you were coming here. Uh, what was kind of your, where was your thoughts? Were you excited? I mean, you have met some of us previously, or, or were you uh, just you had been at Bluff Park for nine years? Nine years. I was at Bluff Park uh, Methodist for nine years, and that was the only church that my son really remembered at all because uh, he had a few years at Canterbury, but not enough to really uh, remember those years. So that was an ang anxious time for us of coming to a new place, uh, coming to uh, a larger congregation, coming to a congregation where uh, our kids didn't know anybody yet. And uh, I will say your daughter Hannah was one of the people that really welcomed my daughter Lena. Uh, in the first couple of weeks, but everybody was just so welcoming. I mean, the very first thing, if you remember, on my very first Sunday here, somebody gave me the gift of COVID. <laughs> um, I, that was, I had not gotten COVID for two years. Hmm. I'd had all my shots and everything, but my very first Sunday here, um, that, that came right to me. Well, so, it's, we're just such a giving church. Such a giving church. Uh, you make room for people except for on a pew. Um, right here, where Michael and uh, Maggie are on the pew, but Robert and I are not on the pew. Comfortably in the chair. Yeah. Well, we do yeah. get a little bit more comfortable seating. That's true. That's true. Um, anyway, uh, but I, I remember just being excited to come here and not knowing what to expect um, and excited to work with all of you. I had never worked with Michael Bowman before, even though a few people think we've true. worked together uh, for a while and are shocked that uh, we had never really met until... Uh, we found out that we were both coming here to mm -hmm. Asbury. We had talked on the phone before, but we had never met. And I, uh, if you remember my sermon about being stuck in the airport in Kansas City with <laughs> Robert and Maggie, I had uh, known Robert for a while. I hadn't really met Maggie yet, but we did meet um, about, uh, I would say about six months, seven months before I was announced uh, to be coming here on staff. Yeah, to me, one of the coolest things was if, for the four of us, to me, I felt like we knew each other forever, mm. almost immediately, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. is strange, I think. Mm -hmm. So, and Michael, I remember when we got a phone call, uh, Michael and Sarah were, were renting a home, uh, and they're moving to a new church, and then the owner of the home decides, I think I'm going to sell the house. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that, that, that wasn't stressful at all, was it, Michael? No, it was a really just calm, <laughs> peaceful experience. <laughs> How um, long did they give you? They gave us a month, which I didn't know was legal at the time. <laughs> and apparently it's not, but it was also apparently in our lease agreement that they could. So, uh, yeah, Asbury stepped up to the plate and got us a house <laughs> pretty much. Uh, the you know, Melissa Wise, the realtor, we're in a wonderful home not far from here now. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Maggie, um, we had, of course, we were here. Yes. And we had been through an interim. And have worked together for how long? How long? Gosh, you were on staff before I was. Right. And Maybe 12 I've, years or yeah, 10 years? I've just started my, just finished my 10th year, I think. Yeah. I'm in my, it'll be 11 in October. Right. Yeah. Um, Do you remember what? 
it was going through our heads. I know we had some conversations. I don't know that we can share them all, but no, <laughs> do you, you kind of no. remember what we were thinking during that time? Um, I think, you know, there was a lot of anxiety about um, what we had been through in terms of just, just change, pastoral change. And um, we had been sort of at the helm, you, myself and Bill. Um, and I really love Bill Morgan and, and, relied on him and you heavily. So yeah, I was probably, worried about yeah. kind of what, what would happen to that, that team. Um, I was a little anxious about Bill it. Bill probably let us do more than he should have let us do. 100%. <laughs> 100%. Cause he didn't want to be in charge. Right. So we're like, right. Okay. Yeah. That sounds yeah. great. But, um, I can honestly say I didn't have anything to worry about. And the first time we had lunch together, I think, and, I can't remember what month that was. And to, we ate at Tzatziki's, I think. Mm-hmm. It's I was either like, in April or May. I mean, I think we both left there and were like, this is going to be great. This yeah. is absolutely going to be great. Mm. Like, we both felt yeah. more reassured and, and just like the future was in a solid place. Yeah, I got an email during that time from Angela Martin, uh, who used to work with Mike. And she said, you guys won the senior pastor lottery. And I, that has come true. Hmm. Uh, that it's just, the collaborative nature in which we operate is just yeah. really fun and, and energizing. So, anything that what was some of the pr- surprises that has come up in the last year for for not just for the newer guys, but any of us? What what surprises you about something that's? I mean, like I knew that Mike was a little bit of a joker. Like, I don't really think I knew <laughs> to the extent <laughs> that the dad jokes, the puns, like, could consistency. just... Consistency. Yeah, like the consist. That's yeah. exactly right, the consistency of it. Like, I've started where I can get a little bit now of a tell, his tell, you know, like when he's, when he's about to launch one, but... <laughs> I was not prepared for that. <laughs> the onslaught. The of, onslaught. Yeah, the onslaught of dad jokes. Of dad jokes. Um, yeah. He's, he's very punny, too. Yes. He, he can really make a pun. Like, just on the fly. Yeah, we, we a have skill. a side channel where we have to go, hey, was that a joke or do we need I know. to respond? And you're like, and sometimes he'll make <laughs> one, and then like a minute later, I'll be like, oh, oh. just got that. Yeah. <laughs> No, no comment on that, Mike. No comment, yeah. <laughs> no, no I guess comment. your family's used to it. They are used to it, uh, and I hold back mostly on Sunday mornings. Um, every now and then I'll, I'll use one, like in the children's moment. That was probably a surprising moment for me when, um, when I was leading a children's moment, and it was the first time after I had sort of lost control <laughs> over the kids. The first time. <laughs> The first, the first two times, <laughs> uh, and and uh, and so I joked around with them, and I said, "Well, you know, my suspension is over. I'm back doing children's moments." And then I proceeded to tell a bad joke, and I sat down, and one of the children looked over at me and said, "That's probably why you were suspended." <laughs> <laughs> and wasn't making a joke himself. He was not making a joke, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but it was funny. Um, no. What about you, it. Michael? What surprised you? Well, I always think of uh, Christmas Eve, 4 o'clock, because Mike and I have never done a Christmas Eve service here, and we were the ones tasked with, he was preaching, I was the liturgist, and uh, we ran out of communion, and we had like a thousand plus people, uh, which was wonderful. I mean, it was a beautiful service, it was great, but the surprise was, I'm running back and forth (laughs) between the back and the front and going to check on people. And yeah, that I wasn't prepared for that. And and you were running around and doing things, but what was I doing during? Yeah, you were just standing there, (laughs) smiling. (laughs) I'm sweating, (laughs) closing my rings (laughs) on my Apple Watch, and you're just standing there like, yeah, yeah, go get more. (laughs) Golly, I I would also say I was surprised. Just uh, and we've kind of talked about this a little bit, but just surprised at how easy and natural it's felt kind of becoming a part of Asbury and a part of our staff, but then also just the four of us, it really has been kind of a natural fit. Uh, You were talking about your email from Angela and I was thinking of talking to Sandy O'Kelly at the conference Mm. and she said, Asbury has the all-star team. And I didn't really know what that meant. I was excited to join, but then I started and I was like, oh, she was serious. Um, And I've been pleasantly 
surprised at how true that has been and just grateful to be a part. Yeah, you know, when I worked at the the conference and and went to many different churches, um, it is uh, amazing to me that no matter who's preaching, it's, I mean, I learn something every time I, I put on the podcast and listen to mics because mm-hmm. I'm over in modern uh, a lot, or when one of you guys are preaching in modern and I get to be in there, it, it's just, uh, we're just very fortunate. And, and I think that we sharpen each other a little bit too. And that's been fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But speaking of worship, uh, we're not always real reverent <laughs> up there in the service. Who? <laughs> Who's not reverent? <laughs> it's like, I don't know. It just it seems like every week we're kind of staring at each other going, what just happened there? <laughs> That's not well, irreverence. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, okay. well, irreverence is the wrong word, but, but uh, not. So I forgot. What was it that I forgot to do? And you were just like looking at me across the, like, not, and not last week when I forgot to call for the hymn. I was right. say, but there which, was another which time. time. Yeah, that's funny. It may have been Good <laughs> um, Friday. Yeah, yeah Good right, Friday. Yeah, I think because so. it was Definitely. your idea, and then you forgot right. about it. I had this idea that I wanted the, you know, I wanted the scripture to be read, and then I wanted complete silence before we sang, you know, the chorus, the hymn. Um, yeah, as we were putting as out we were the, lo- as we were putting out the candle, yeah, putting out the candle. So then. And we did a rehearsal. Yeah, we did a rehearsal. We, we walked, walked through, through it. it. And I was very adamant about it that I wanted it that way. So we were like, someone's got to tell Michael, because I think yeah, you, I couldn't couldn't be at that. you weren't, weren't able to be there. So, so then I, I read <laughs> I the scripture. No, I was supposed to wait on him to, to get up and put the candle out. And I just stood up, started reading the scripture. It's okay. Yeah. And, and Michael, what was really funny is that he started to go to extinguish the candle, and then he stopped, <laughs> and I said, go, 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 <laughs> just go. Like, I'm not sure. I wasn't at the walkthrough. I guess this is... <laughs> I mean, is this like the Wizard of Oz where we're like exposing the... Although I think it's not because the people know that we make oh, yeah, mistakes. I mean, I've fallen, a mic's fallen out of the, you know, I mean, there's just something every week. Oh, I get comments. Mike forgot to... Take the offering take plate. Take the offering <laughs> plate last week. Mm-hmm. I think I, I get comments after every, whatever the service is, it doesn't matter. Somebody says something about how funny it was watching us up there because they know us or because they saw that hiccup happen. They've asked me if I was sleeping in the chair once behind the lectern. <laughs> um, uh, Ash Wednesday, they were like, you were way too happy sitting by Maggie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we got separated for, for <laughs> Good Friday. We got separated for Good Friday. <laughs> it was your I fault. Had, I had no, to do it. Was my I fault. had to separate I couldn't you. stop talking. Well, Ash Wednesday is a pretty somber service. Well, I mean, hey. But the yeah, more well. holy it is, like, the more Michael's just yes. you know, lit yeah. up with joy. So. Get all the energy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure if it's the last time I was in traditional, but uh, we had to light the candles at 830, and I, I went and I lit the rice candle and I was walking down and someone said it went out and so I went all the way back <laughs> and I lit it again and it went out and I was like what in the world <laughs> well Mike lights it and it stays lit and I'm like holy cow what am I doing wrong I, I was blowing it out because <laughs> <laughs> you were blowing breath. out the candle the lighter. Candle? The candle lighter. <laughs> candle lighter. <laughs> and like, I'm putting on our uh, okay, um, staff messaging, our Slack channel. I'm putting, hey, guys, we got to turn the vents off because it's blowing out. The That's candle. what we thought. We asked we asked for the vents to be closed or, <laughs> or the air to go off because it was blowing out the candle, but yeah. it wasn't the air. No. Nope. It was Robert. <laughs> nope. Yep. Powerful breath. <laughs> <laughs> and how many years have I been doing that? Put light in the crew. Oh. Anyway. I hope our Asbury family finds these moments, you know, a little endearing humorous maybe? and en- endearing. Yeah. 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 So what, what kind of strikes you about the, the people of Asbury? Well, uh, I will answer just because I had a conversation this very week with someone in a, um, an urban United Methodist mission agency uh, who was talking about Asbury volunteers. And uh, he just said that Asbury volunteers show up, they don't really care if they are executives, um, CEOs, 
you know, stay at home parents, whatever they are, they get in and get involved and do something. Uh, there's a, a servant's heart linked to people at Asbury mm. that this person noticed and, and wanted me to know how special that is because there are other churches where that sort of feeling mm. or sentiment is not there. And, you know, I'm, I'm one of those people that likes to think that there, there's nature and nurture that goes from that, that there are people uh, who are just naturally more humble and all of that. But there's also uh, the nurture side that our faith and our DNA as a church is part of that. And I think about um, the, the servant's entrance, the, uh, the, you know, the words that we walk over when we enter into either side of the building, or even uh, the stories that Mitchell Williams shared at mm. Summer Institute 2022. <clears throat> where he said that every Sunday after worship, when this church was just starting out small in the late 80s, if you showed up, you had to sign up to volunteer the next Sunday. There was, there was some role that you had to take care of, and it didn't matter who you were. Something had to be done, and you were going to be a part of it. And I think that speaks a lot to the, uh, to the people here of Asbury that I've noticed, that there is a sense of if something needs to be done, we will rise to the occasion, whether it's generosity or actually showing up themselves and yeah. doing something. What's yeah. the name of the Catholic church down 119? It's, I've, I've gone blank. Um, um, Our Lady of the Valley? Lady Valley? Yeah, no. yeah. Uh, my wife was talking to one of their church members one day, and uh, she mentioned that we went to Asbury and that I was one of the pastors there, and he just lit up, and he goes, we love Asbury. He said, I work on one of our teams that helps the community. And if we can't help every time we call Asbury, hmm. they step up, hmm. you know? So it's not just, I mean, people notice that about yeah. mm -hmm. who these folks Absolutely. are. Yeah. And I love what you said. See, we have CEOs in our church that are doing all kinds of jobs within mm -hmm. helping set up, helping serve uh, refreshments and modern help. It, it's just, just a really sweet place. Mm hmm it's what makes working here, I think, a joy. In my sermon Sunday, I was able to show a picture of, you know, nine ladies that have meant a lot mm. to me in my walk. But honestly, I mean, that's nine of, I, I can't tell you how many ladies and, and gentlemen that have really just encouraged and supported me. And I just see that love of God in the way that they love and encourage other people. So, yeah, it's, it's a great place. To work, yeah, we're pretty lucky. Yeah, I'd agree. I think uh, open is a word I think about. Honest is another one, and sincere is how I've thought about the people of Asbury. Not just because we go out and serve, or because of what we do with our budget every year mm -hmm. with the MIA team, and but also just in accepting me and my family from the get go. Uh, one cool thing was. Uh, often a new pastor starts and it's common to be asked about yourself and just you focus, but most people would say, we're so excited to have you and Sarah and Grady. Mm -hmm. Like they already had taken the time to, before they'd even met Sarah or Grady, like get to know our names and ask about us, how we're doing, ask about how they're transitioning. Um, is there anything they can do to help? I know Mike experienced this with his family as well. Mm -hmm. Um, and that, that is small, but it goes a long way. Um, and they've only shown that to be true with others. I mean, there's been new folks who have joined our church since we've been here the past year. And I've seen um, not just our staff, but, you know, members, longtime members, and those who have just started, maybe their new members here have just brought people into the fold as well. And that's, yeah. that goes a long way for folks. Yeah. And it's, it's so sincere because not only are, do they ask about Sarah or they ask about Jim or Tracy or Julie. There's not, at least that I can tell, an expectation right, right. for what they do within the life of the church, mm -hmm. that, that they can be and fit in however they see, mm -hmm. you know, and that's not always the case in churches. Well, there's a lot of expectations, yeah. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. And of course, with that COVID at the beginning, Julie had preached more at Asbury than you had. That's and I right. thought that was fun. Because <laughs> she preached in Modern for the Women of Faith series. Yeah, our that Women you did, of Faith series, yeah. Uh, before mm. I was even announced coming here. Yeah. Uh, and, then, uh, and then, of course, uh, she preached in Modern when I was out. 
uh, with COVID, and uh, she's preached once more with you yeah. in in the yeah. service. And then, of course, she helped with the um, uh, the uh, Summer Institute in 2022, right. talking about grace. Um, and she is, as many people know, a, a United Methodist pastor as well, the chaplain at Birmingham Southern, and they've gotten some good news so far this spring as well. And so she's looking forward to another good semester and year mm-hmm. there. Uh, but she has also felt... Uh, very welcomed, and even found the Sunday school class to play into. Oh, that's into. great! Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah that that's really awesome. Um, all right. Um, is there anything that just stands out to you during this first year together? I mean, anything that you just think, man, that's that's it. I I have one, but I'm having a hard time figuring out how to share it uh, without. Anyway, I'll just say it. Um, the thing that, now it. we're yeah. worried what you're going to say. Yeah. 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 yeah Chris is going. <laughs> but what stands out to me is that we all have a voice at the table. Hmm. Um, the, and we talked about the collaboration. Mm-hmm. But sometimes when you're not the person in charge, you, you wonder, you know, how important is my voice? And I remember uh, us doing something that I suggested, and I'm thinking, oh, crap. <laughs> Sometimes I just say things. <laughs> I need to be really careful. In fact, Mike and the eval said, hey, you need to speak up a little bit more. And I'm like, well, you're listening. That's tough. Right. <laughs> you know, and so that stands out, just that oh, way man. in which uh, we're allowed to lead. It's a good one, Robert. It's hard to compete with that. Yeah, I wish we, I'd had that question. I should have sent time. that out beforehand, Thanks. shouldn't I? Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm kind of struck with the timeliness of how this has all come together in terms of the four of us leading together and where our church is. Um and you could call it God's hand, the Holy Spirit working. But I can't imagine um, working with leaders of more integrity, people who are able to walk with our church family through what we're walking through. Um, I couldn't be more proud of how each of you has led. Um, the integrity that Mike has brought um, to Asbury in this period of time has just been really wonderful to watch people meet with him constantly and, and him just listen and talk to them. And, um, it's been really, um, it's been really phenomenal to see that. And even in this time that things are kind of like eh, a little, you know, I have felt very reassured mm. with, with how things have gone in terms of how the process has gone and the discernment team and um, how you have all led and brought such authenticity to the table. So I think that that's it's too much. No, too much. it's fine. <laughs> I mean, you kind of said the same thing, Robert, too. But Yeah, but um, what you said made me want to change mine and, and <laughs> how what stands out to me is how much of a voice now our lay leadership has in the life that of the church. That's true as well, yeah. That, that might be the most striking difference yeah. in, in how Mike's leading the church is yeah. the, the lay folks, and that's fantastic. Well, characteristic of the yeah. year, yeah. Yeah, how it's supposed to be. Yeah. Well, and I'll, I'll share a little story about that, because when, when I served in my first church at First United Methodist Church, Trustful, I remember uh, that the senior pastor and I were advocating for hiring a a new worship leader, uh, not for an existing service, but for a brand new service. We were launching a contemporary service, which to this day is still there. Uh, it's called Grace Vision. Uh, but at the time, it was a big leap of faith for this church. You know, it was this yeah. uh, big expense, this leap of faith. You know, can we afford doing this? And and I remember in a very loving way, not in a threatening way, but in a very loving way, one of the members of Staff Parish just said, you know, we love you, but this isn't your church. 
Hmm. You know, this is our church. You're, you're going to be gone in a few years, and we're going to still be here. Hmm. And and that was a uh, an important moment for me of just of giving voice to something of this collaboration of of leadership and clergy is is not just so the four of us can run a ship uh, together. Yeah. It's it's that there are people in this church that are called and gifted, uh, who are asked to serve. Sometimes in, for many years in a ministry. Sometimes they're called or volunteer to serve in a leadership position for, you know, one year to three years, depending on what, what leadership position they're signing up for. And, and this is the church that they belong to, and, and they need to have a voice, and they need to have a, an understanding of who we are and where we're going, because really the authority that we have as clergy only come from the trust that's given to us that's by the right. church. You know, we, we have degrees or we're getting degrees and, and all of that. Uh, but, but really what, uh, what really puts the stamp of approval on us is the call. You know, the degree is important for the Methodist institu- institution, but the call is what really uh, gives us mm-hmm. authority. But that authority only works if we are in relationship, in community, uh, in, in some ways vulnerable with one another. Uh, and, and I think that's part of what you, you call integrity is just the openness that um, we're trying to have with, with ourselves, but also with our, pa- our, our um, pastoral staff, our uh, ministry staff, and our church families, just saying, you matter. We want to hear from you. We're not going to shut anybody out. Um, instead, we want to you know, bring people into the fold and try to see what is on the heart of people in our community and in our church. But ultimately, some decisions have to be made, and so it's going to be made by the people that are called and tasked and approved by the charge conference to do that. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and we don't really try to um, maneuver those decisions mu- as much as we try to inform those right. decisions, to give people ac- accurate information. Um, Every now and then, referring to the book of discipline, <laughs> but but just saying like this is this is what you can do. This is what you can't do. Here here uh, are some opportunities that you might want to think about. What do you want to do? Yeah, yeah. What about you? Uh, I think the main thing, and I don't. Yeah, I, I guess I'll just say, I being here, I've been allowed to be myself. Um, and that stood out. I, I don't know if the church is always a safe place for people, even pastors at times. Um, and I've just felt like I've been allowed to be me, but I've been struck by how uh, calm and at peace I've felt, even in the midst of all these big discussions that we're having, surveys, um, not even around just what's happening in the denomination, but just daily life and church and family and ministry and everything else. And I've felt um, like the three of you especially, but I mean, of course, the rest of the staff too, yeah. but the three of you especially have I've been allowed to be honest and naive and vulnerable and young, but also you've gotten, you guys have made me feel wise and respected and cared for and appreciated. Um, this church, Asbury, as a greater body, has made me feel that way too. Um, and that's something I think I'll hold on to uh, because going forward in our ministry here, but then just in life, that this is how we should treat each other. We should be able to expect this kind of uh, environment within what we call church. Uh, we should be able to expect people to pray for you and not just say they're praying for you, but to actually pray for you. Actually. Uh, to show up. Um, I mean, I come in and I have a bag of coffee on my desk, like, hey, you should try this, like from Mike. And okay, that's awesome. That's something I, I would love to try. Thank you. Good coffee. But it's not asked for. It's just, it just shows up. Uh, Maggie brought me back coffee. I don't know why it all centers around coffee. Uh, but <laughs> it doesn't. Um, Robert brought us disposable toothbrushes. I didn't I get did. a disposable yes, did. toothbrush. Did I not put one on your desk? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. That's awkward. Uh, it's okay. Uh, I've got, I've got like 30 of them. I'll uh, I don't It's okay. Uh, <laughs> no, I'll take it. I mean, yeah. I thought at first, I thought, is this a, is this a, like, a, a message? Yeah. Am I supposed <laughs> to read, <laughs> you're something? You're something? read into something? You know, I ordered those after, it was one of those marathon days where 
I mean, you come in in the morning, you're not home till 10 yeah. o'clock at yeah. night. That doesn't happen very often. So not complaining, but I was thinking, I need to brush my teeth. My breath is terrible. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and I, That's you know, it's funny. got this, it's got the, soap. it's got toothpaste, it's got in, the it. toothpaste in it and it's floss oh, on the other it's end. It's awesome. I'll put some on your desk, Michael. I'm sorry. Um, um, I mean, yeah. Thanks, Mike. A picture that <laughs> sticks with me, like it's just a joy to come to work, is is that we have this table in the office, and we had a conference table, and Robin White was insistent, and I love this about her, that we had some sort of space where we could all like eat together. Um, and so she, <laughs> we ended up being able to get this table from someone and it was gifted to us. And so there are just so many days when we all like sit around it and eat lunch together in the middle of the office. And, you know, Melanie or Suzanne will come up or Angie. And um, I don't know, moments like that where there's just so much laughter and sharing of just ordinary life. Um, Mm -hmm. You know, it's a picture that just always sticks with me about how great our staff is and um, how much we love one another and respect one another and care for one another. Yeah. I th- trust is another word that just has popped in my head a lot. And I think we trust each other. I think we're able, at least since I've been here, I don't know what was true of Asbury before, but I know that we've built um, for me personally, at least I feel like I can trust each person on our team, on our staff, no matter what they do or what they're involved with or how often I even see them. I mean, I think about Gina. Yeah. I only see her when I get to go down and okay. visit most of the time because she's up and then she's back down. Uh, but then with you guys, like there's a level of trust here. And what I hope is that that continues to translate to the rest of our church and that yeah. maybe Asbury can be known as, you know, a church where, wow, I can trust the people there. And, yeah, um, that's good. And I think that's a sign of the kingdom and... Um, what Jesus would have for us, and it's been yeah, great. Absolutely. I mean, I spend. I, I mean, pe- David, especially David Miller, gets on to me. He's like, "Go to your office," but I spend. It's because I spend most of my time in Other like y'all's office. offices, <laughs> <laughs> like, or downstairs, or downstairs. Or well, and some of that or, is, yeah. you know, some of that is it's your responsibilities. Yeah, He's some of that in there. is. Don't look for Michael in his. Yeah, office. never look for me in my office. I won't. Well, yeah. sit. This morning, one of Michael's friends was around. He said, "Where's Michael's office at?" And I, I said, well, he keeps his stuff there, but you might want to check everybody else's office. (laughs) But I I mean, it's because, I mean, most of it is because I'm an extrovert and want to be around you and like talk and stuff. And maybe I don't want to do some work or something. But the other side of it is like most of my sermons have been written through conversations with you guys. Like (laughs) most of my work comes from sitting in the office and talking about that congregant we need to follow up with or you know, so I, what a hey, joy it is, though. My work love language is quality time. Quality time. So it's always good with me, which is terrible. Yeah. <laughs> it's been a long time in there. Yeah. That kind of leads me to where I kind of wanted to start to have us land. Year two, what might be some of your hopes? And, and I heard Michael saying a hope of this trust that our team is building that it extend larger within the community because we've been through a lot as a church Hmm. you know and so i I think that that's a good one of where we hope things go but any other thoughts year two where where would you like to see asbury uh heading not in a official direction but a spirit uh, uh who we are as a people any thoughts on that i'm gonna let mike take the lead on that one (laughs) (laughs) well uh you know Part of, of what uh, a senior pastor in transition needs to remember is that, you know, the first year is really about building trust. It's about learning the congregation and understanding what the con- congregation values and, and, um, and where um, the gifts that God has given this church lie. And, and, you know, most of that is in the skill set and the strengths and the calling of the laity, you know. Uh, the only reason ministries in our church keep going is because volunteers show up to do it. You know, we can we can do all we want to as a staff, but without the the people coming and doing something, it just won't continue. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, learning where those gifts are and and who is 
um, who is a part of our congregation. And this is not just people that show up in the pews or in modern. This is also people who worship with us online. We found out uh, in our process of getting the survey ready that one of our faithful members who worships online out of state has gifts and skills that helped us to edit that that survey to make it, uh, I think, more clear and uh, more effective. And so all of a sudden, in a conversation, you find out someone has the gifts that we need for a certain ministry or mission. Um, for year two, one of the things that I think is really important for for our church, but also for us, is to continue to focus on our discipleship system. You know, we we talk a lot about worship, serve, and grow. And I'm going to talk a little bit about this on Confirmation Sunday, so it'll probably be, um, this will probably go out after all this, but when we think about the words worship, serve, and grow, I think about the confessions of our faith, that mm. you know Jesus is our Savior, He is our Messiah, so therefore we worship Him and the one who raised Him from the dead. Uh, Jesus is our Lord, and then if that's the case, then we serve Him and His kingdom. Mm-hmm. Uh, we don't get the option to sit on the sidelines. If we say Jesus is Lord, then we are called to serve. And then the last is Jesus is our teacher or rabbi, as Michael Bowman likes to talk about. Um, and, uh, and, and that means that Jesus uh, is our teacher and we're called to grow um, and follow and practice and do the things that Jesus uh, did and calls us to do. And so I just think about how worship, serve, and grow is not just the thing we say at Asbury and Every Week, it's the path that we're on. It is the path that we're hoping every person in our congregation yeah. is walking to be in worship, to be worshipful, you know, to, to serve and to be open and honest and sacrificial when you, when you serve, but then also to, to grow and to not stay the same, um, to really expand your understanding of God and His grace and His love for you, as well as what it really means to be a disciple. Because... I think that what you'll find is is that once you actually go through that process, Michael Bowman calls it being an apprentice of Jesus, um, the the real fruit of the Christian life starts to become evident. You know, we want the very things that the only way to get them is to walk with Jesus and to uh, to do the things that Jesus did. And so, you know, somebody might say, "I just I'm so anxious all the time. I just want some peace. Just give me some peace. Tell me something that would make me feel peaceful." And, you know, in the scripture, the answer is, well, if you want peace, then be with God, Mm. follow Jesus, you know, worship, serve, and grow. Um, And so that's one of the things I really want to make sure is that we focus on that, we make it easy to start that journey, uh, as well as to continue on that journey, and um, to make sure that uh, also we're as a church family, uh, finding ways to stick together, uh, finding ways to support one another. Um, just like uh, Michael and Sarah have been supported by Asbury, and I know you've supported people here uh, and spent time with folks, uh, that's the thing we need to continue to do for one another, because we can't be uh, a church of people uh, who don't know one another and sit in the same space for an hour a Sunday. To be a church, we've yeah. got to have relationships, and continue to grow and serve. And I think that Asbury has a rich history of this. This is not yeah. changing or improve. Well, it's not changing the culture. It's about really uh, nurturing and fine-tuning the culture. Because like you've said from the people at Our Lady of Sorrows or uh, Urban Ministry downtown, that's already happening. The discipleship model or, or process that we have works but I just want as many as people as possible to, to be on that path because that's what got me here. Uh, I'm here because when I was in high school, I was on a discipleship uh, walk. I was taking disciple Bible study, but the youth version. Uh, <laughs> as a senior in high school, I was doing uh, children's minutes. I was uh, serving in mission. I mean, I was doing the things that Jesus told us to do, and look what happened to me. I got called into being an ordained minister. So, and we have people starting to become uh, or starting the process to become ordained Methodist ministers right now. 
uh, which is just so beautiful and wonderful that yeah. it keeps happening. Mm-hmm. God's still at work. Anyway. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, th- go ahead. Well, what were you going to say? No, I was going to say, I don't think I could have said any better. <laughs> well, I just, that, that picture that Mike is painting here, I, I, it's hard not to think of John 15 with Jesus talking about abiding in me, that, that may know that remaining at one with me. You're the branch. Um, I'm the vine. I think about uh, how fruit trees bear fruit, and it's, it's funny to me, like you've never seen a stressed out orange tree before. Like you've never seen an orange sitting there being like, oh, I just got to make more oranges <laughs> and better oranges. No, they just, they just make oranges because it's an orange tree. And I think if we, like Mike is talking about here, can just take Jesus up on the offer, maybe take him seriously a little bit and, and abide to remain at one with Jesus, with Christ, that we too will then start bearing fruit. And Paul will later pick up on that idea and talk about it as the fruit of the Spirit. So when you're talking about, like, I just want more peace, it's like, yeah, that's one of the fruit of the Spirit. Of course you do. It's love, joy, peace. I mean, we learn all this stuff uh, in children's ministry. But um, I, I, me too. I, I think we all, we've, we've had these conversations with Mike and as a clergy team before that this is the hope, that we do want the kingdom of God to be a place that when Jesus said it was here, that we would believe that to be true and live in and from it now. And then maybe even make it more visible to others in the way that we abide in Jesus. So um, that's kind of what I'm looking forward to in year two and beyond, because uh, I think it's a lifelong thing. Uh, but I'm also looking forward to doing that with y'all. Mm. <laughs> you know, sounds fun. It does. Um, you know, as we we hopefully will be doing this every month, unless you guys just say, we're not watching this. Uh, <laughs> and so fair. we're, we're going to get into all kinds of different topics. Uh, I think one of the things we've talked about is maybe talking about how we do our preaching and how mm-hmm. we look at that to give, you know, peel back. We might take one of our uh, sermon series and kind of unpack it a little bit more. Uh, but we're going to be doing all kinds of things. So we hope that you'll enjoy that. Uh, and it's called The Pew. And so Maggie and Michael are actually sitting on a pew that was gifted to, to Michael, mm-hmm. which was awesome. But to close us out, and I have not given any heads up. Mm-hmm. Mike, will you give us a good joke, a good dad oh, joke? Did you just put him on the spot? I was like expecting that? like a benediction. I know. I thought like that's a what blessing you were or do. sending. And we're just going straight to the dad joke. <laughs> Logical. <laughs> it would have. And if you'd rather do that, you can. But I was just curious if you could pop one out right on the spot. I mean, I don't know if that's a question. That is a challenge. Is it? Oh, my goodness. Does it have to be new or can I recycle one? Oh, you can recycle. Oh, you can recycle. One yeah. For sure. Okay. Okay. Well, the one that I like the most that surprises a lot of kids and they, they end up liking it is the scariest plant in the world. <laughs> you know what the scariest plant in the world is? Bamboo. <laughs> well done. Well done. Yeah. Yeah. Man, the, the kids do enjoy that. The they do like that love him. A yes. lot. Yes. A lot. They so, like it. Well, thank you everyone Thanks, for turning into this first episode of The Pew. <laughs> pew Pew. <laughs> pew. <I love> it. <laughs> it's like Star Wars. It is. <laughs>